everyone. This is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com, where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this Q&A video, I'm going to address logo watermarks. But first, make sure you check out my free video series available via my website. This video is actually the second in a series addressing watermarks. You may wish to click on the link to view the first one where we created this text watermark. I'm going to turn off the visibility of this watermark by clicking the visibility icon and we're going to work on a logo watermark. So this assumes that you have a logo in some type of file, probably a JPEG, which is what this one is. So I could save this as a JPEG and use this as my watermark. And when I say use it, I mean, I could call it from within Lightroom using a preset to place it on my photographs. I could use it in an action inside of Photoshop and what it would look like on a photo. We can test that. We're just gonna press V on our keyboard to access our move tool and click and drag it over so we can kind of see what that would look like on a photograph and how me, how we might wish to place it. But I'm gonna delete that for now just by pressing delete or backspace on my keyboard. But you know what, I think I would like to remove the pink square from the background behind my logo and just have it as a transparent H so that I could place it on my photographs. And I have this JPEG image and it's simply a background. The first thing I wanna do is double click the lock icon and just say okay so that I can now work on this layer. In order to remove that pink background, I'm going to press W on my keyboard to select my magic wand tool. Now be careful, you may have the quick selection tool selected, so you just wanna make sure you have the magic wand tool. You can access this via the keyboard shortcut of W. However, it is if it is behind the other tool, you can press Shift W to cycle through them. I have the tolerance set to 20 and I have contiguous checked and that's because when I look at this logo, I can see that the pink is touching in every area, and if it were not, meaning if there were a line around that H, maybe I would uncheck contiguous and it would select pink anywhere in the photo. But for now, all the pink is touching. So all I need to do is click on the pink and Photoshop will automatically select that same color in the entire canvas. And then all I need to do is press delete or backspace on my keyboard and it will remove that background. Now this was an easy selection because it was a solid color. This can get tricky and sometimes we have to use other selection techniques. In order to deselect, I'm gonna press Command D, that's Control D on the PC. Then I'm going to press V on my keyboard again to grab the move tool, click and drag it over to the photograph and now I have that nice transparent H and I could think about placement, etc. If this was good enough for you, and now you have your logo transparent, all you need to do is go to File and Save. And make sure, I'm just gonna put that on my desktop for now, make sure you choose PNG, and I'm just gonna call this Logo, and choose Save, and select None for the interlace options and say OK. So now I can call this logo from Lightroom or Photoshop using presets or actions. It would be a pretty rare instance for me to manually place this logo on a photograph like I did here and sort of move it around how I like it because that's just not efficient. I wanna set up systems that lead to automation. But I've gotta tell you, as I look at my logo on this photo, and by the way, I love branding. I put this H on everything. I even have it on my robe, okay? Brand recognition, I think, is so important. However, if this photo propagated throughout the web of the internet and it just had this H on it and no link back to my site, how in the world would anybody know that this was from Weddings by Heather? Oh, they would not. Maybe I could combine my text watermark with this logo and possibly choose a different placement so that I can use my logo along with my website, maybe that could be, you know, something of that nature. And I could create that sort of a combination of the last two videos, this video and the previous video. We could combine this in a PNG file and then we could use this on our photographs. And I actually, I don't hate the way that looks. Hey, maybe I'll change it. But if you don't have your name, your business name, or a way for people to find you, then they're not gonna know that the photograph was yours. Also, along those same lines, I chose to put my website 
because I don't want people to have to think. People are busy and they don't have time to think. So if I just had Weddings by Heather on this banner, then if somebody saw this on the internet, they would have to go to Google and search Weddings by Heather to find my website. And that's an extra step. And I don't want to get on people's nerves. I know, does that sound silly? But it's true. But I, I want them to just be able to know, oh, weddingsbyheather.com. And I can go to the website and find what I'm looking for. I don't want them to have to think because thinking slows people down and it actually prevents them from taking action. So that's why I have my website. I do like the logo. I like brand recognition, complete personal preference. I hope that you found these videos useful. I'll see you in the next one.